They have come from all five boroughs, kids of all ages, making their way to Queens and Carneseca Arena for a battle of two of the top teams in the Big East Conference, St. John's and DePaul from Carneseca Arena. Good morning to you, Jonathan Yardley and Julianne Viani. Excited about this one. These teams picked to finish 1-2 in the Big East. They met in the conference final last year. Julianne, after three meetings last year, they're pretty familiar with each other. Oh, yeah. This is this game is going to help break the log jam at the top of the league. These are two teams playing with tremendous confidence and efficiency on both ends of the floor, and it features a couple of the nation's top scorers in Brittany Arinko and Aaliyah Hanford. This should be an interesting matchup between two very contrasting styles, John. The different styles start with DePaul's offense. The Blue Demons lead the country better than 90 points a game. Of course, they also lead the Big East as well, and they can shoot Julianne from just about anywhere. Yeah, 90 plus in 10 of their 17 games, and they had a season high 109 this year at Loyola. This is a team that can do it on both ends of the floor, though. Not only are they an offensive-minded team, but their defense leads the Big East. They lead it in steals with 14 per game, so they're a very complete team. On the St. John's side, Julianne, 3-3 three and three in their last six games. Of course, that includes a loss to UConn. We can all forgive them that. But what does St. John's need to do with that great defense to slow down DePaul? Well, St. John's has to really take authority on the defensive end. This is what Joe Tardamella preaches is their defense. And I think that they bring that just about every single game, and they've got to continue to do that. But what I think they need to do is score today. Everyone knows when you play DePaul, if you don't score, you can't hang with them. So I think other players have to step up today. Jade Walker and Amber Thompson need to do something because lately Denasia Grant's been held down. Four teams tied for first place in the Big East Conference. We're going to see two of them when we come back. St. John's and DePaul. Tip-off is next. Here we go from Queens. Both teams 4-1 and one in conference play. Picked to finish 1-2 in the conference. DePaul was picked to finish first. St. John's second. And Jade Walker has the first two points of the game. And that is a great seal by Walker. She has to be able to seal off players today. And that's something that St. John's has been working on in practice. Joe Tartamella wants balance out of this group. We told you DePaul can fire from three-point range. And Shanice Jenkins gets the Blue Demons started. Already, and that was too easy for Jenkins. Just a quick pass to the wing. Aaliyah Lewis running the point for St. John's. You can tell they're looking for Walker inside early. This is Hanford, their leading scorer. No good from the foul line. But Denasia Grant steals it right back, goes to the basket. It's a good sign for St. John. There's a look at the Big East standings. Four teams tied at four and one. Butler lurking just behind at four and two. Great depth and parity at the top of the conference this year, Julianne. Yeah, this is this is what I love about the Big East, is it's just parity everywhere. I mean, Seton Hall has had a tremendous year. They're playing DePaul on Sunday. We mentioned that Villanova started out the season rough, and they're four and one right now in the conference. And Butler too lost their first two games. They just beat St. John's at St. John's. So any team that can beat a team here in Carneseco Arena has got some talent. First year head coach over there. He's done a terrific, they've done a terrific job. This, this conference is a lot of fun. McGee got Grant up in the air, drove the lane, and Hanford deflected the shot on the way through. I think she spooked her, actually. <laughs> I think McGee should have finished that. That was the old jump in your face, but don't actually make any contact. Exactly. I mean, you can, that's that's all you have to do sometimes, and you're going to spook someone. McGee got a wide open lane and layup. Grant tries another three and knocks it down. And Grant is hot. They've got to continue to pass her to her the ball. Podkoa got that one to go. That was a two pointer. And Amber Thompson having a hard time on Podkoa because Thompson's used to covering post players that don't step out and shoot from the, the perimeter. And you get Podkoa 6 2. You, you just don't expect somebody like her to be able to nail that shot. But she's got a quick release for a post player. And she's so tall, she gets it off so easily. 
You almost want to tell Walker to go outside and Thompson to stay underneath the basket. Well, here's the thing. What do you give up with DePaul? I mean, you basically, they're going to shoot the three all day. And if you're, if you're going to let them, I mean, you've got to get up on them threes more than two. But then they've got players that can take it to the hole. So they're a tough team to defend. Lewis had trouble bringing that one down, and Hrinko stripped it. Three on one for DePaul. Oh, fancy pass by Hrinko, and it's up and in from Jenkins. Uh, again, it's a turnover into an offensive execution and transition. I think Lewis on the floor, for some reason, it's, it's a matchup problem because whenever she gets deep in the lane, it seems like she's struggling a little bit with the bigger guards. You can see, despite that basket, St. John's is getting tired. Yeah, they are, and that was a good isolation play, but but then you go right back at the under, other end and give up a three, and that's Harinko again in transition. We saw Hanford score earlier and be the first one down the floor. She scored that one, and she stopped yeah. dead still in her tracks. She's exhausted. Yep, I think so, too, because they don't go real deep. St. John's runs five players 30-plus minutes. Oh, that one fell back to Lewis, and she capitalizes. That was a gift. St. John's throws it up, but won't be close. And after the Red Storm controlled much of the first half, it's the Blue Demons who head to the locker room with the lead in front of this capacity crowd at Karnaseka Arena. DePaul 37, St. John's 36 at halftime. Again, they split their regular season games last year. DePaul won the conference championship game, of course, played just outside of Chicago. And that free throw shooting that has plagued St. John's all year, bottom 10 in the country in free throw shooting. Yeah, you make these two, you go up five. It doesn't ice the game. It's still two possessions, but it helps. So it's four. The deficit for DePaul as Rinko brings it up the floor. Step back three. Hit it. The, She's a player. That's the biggest nightmare if you're seeing. talked John. about star power. Rinko, Hanford, and Grant, each with 23 points. These teams tied at 73, and away we go in overtime. St. John's and DePaul, and it's going to be over and back because Denasia Grant's feet were in the front court and she passed it into the backcourt. It's where it, your feet yeah, are, not the ball. It looked like she literally caught it straddling the line. That, that looked like the right call, I see. Yep. I think she, she was saying she, that, that the ball was in the backcourt, but it's where your feet are. Yeah, her she feet knows were it. on the wrong side. Yep, that was the right call. See, they kept Rinko from shooting a three. It's a contested two. And she really pushed the ball with that shot. But January gets a look for three and knocks it down. And Jessica January, she's money from back there too. Big shot to start out this overtime. That, that creates the momentum. That 2 3 zone DePaul has been in, very active in it. McGee with the steal. Rinko lays it up, and DePaul with the first five points in overtime. DePaul on the road, one of the biggest wins of its season. Now, four in a row for the Blue Demons as they come into Karnasek Arena in front of a record crowd and come away with a nine point overtime win, 84 75 over St. John's. What Julianne, where do these teams go from here? Right. Well, what a tremendous game, first of all. I mean, these two teams are two of the best in the conference, just battled to the wire, went into overtime, obviously. Both teams are in a good position still. I mean, it's one game at a time in this conference. You just never know any given night when you play a Big East team what you're going to get. So you're going to get every team's best. DePaul, for sure, as the, as the reigning champs, I mean, they're going to definitely get every team's best. The St. John's, they're still looking good. They've got to continue to plug away each game. It should be interesting to see the outcome of the other games this weekend. And then that Seton Hall game on Sunday at Seton Hall. 
All these road games to start conference play for DePaul, and so far, so good for the Blue Demons. That's going to do it for us from Carneseca Arena. DePaul wins it 84-75 in overtime. The Blue Demons into first place. It's up to everybody else to match them. For my partner, Julianne Viani, I'm Jonathan Yardley. For our entire crew, thanks for watching. DePaul into first place in the Big East with an overtime win. So long from New York.